thank you so much for your time today. It's an absolute pleasure well, to talk to you. A uh, huge fan of, of your work anyway. And obviously when the documentary came about, we were, we were very, very excited to see, to see it. Um, first and foremost, I was going to ask you, how, how, how are you? How's things with, with everything that's going on? Have you been able to, to keep going and keep uh, composing and, and, and thinking everything? Yeah, I mean, strange times, isn't it? Really strange times. Um, I mean, it, it, on one level, my life hasn't really changed because I'm just, you know, I'm sitting in a room writing. <laughs> um, but on the other hand, obviously, the world is completely different. Um, and there's this sort of long term now, I guess, low grade kind of anxiety. Um, and I think the uncertainty of, you know, what's what's going to be possible in the future. Um, it does take its toll, doesn't it? I mean, you know, at the beginning it was simple. You just sort of cancelled everything. Um, you know, no gigs, no recording, no nothing. And in a way, even though it was hard, it was sort of simple. Um, whereas now things are slowly starting to open up, or maybe they're not. And I think that's, in a way, more tiring. So... Yes, yeah, indeed. And a bit more confusing, I think, especially when certain speeches are made that make you think... Can I do this? Can I not do this? But yeah, well, you know, don't get me started. There. <laughs> that's a that's a different discussion, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on the documentary. I watched it last night, and uh, I really, really enjoyed it. But <laughs> the the com the the coupling of the music and the documentary did help me have a good night's sleep. So thank you for that. I've, yeah. I've been I've been due one. Um, so in terms of the the documentary itself, obviously, I know you've done the performance, which I'll ask you about in a minute. But mm. um, how did you find the experience of not just the documentary, but also you know going to the Sundance stuff and people People, people seem to be embracing documentary in the same way and in different ways than, than the music itself. How have you found the experience so far? Yeah, um, I mean, Sleep is a project which keeps evolving, you know, both the music, the performance, and now this, this documentary. Um, I mean, I think it's, it's wonderful. Um, and I mean, it's just such a kind of a privilege and a thrill for, you know, to have made something that people are, you know, um, I guess genuinely connecting to and continuing to connect to. I mean, that that's amazing. You know, when we made Sleep, I mean, it was like everything, a totally personal kind of experimental project, you know. Um, but somehow it's got this sort of gravitational pull around it. And uh, yeah, people just seem to find ways to to uh, make it part of their lives. And um, that's that's a wonderful thing, I think, you know, for any artist to to make a piece which people connect to. I mean, that, that's great. Yeah, and I, I, this is, this would sound like a, a silly question, but obviously there's a lot of a lot of work on on your on your part and everything else with with something called sleep. I mean, is it ironically something that ex is exhausting for you, given that it's quite relaxing for everybody else? That it's been an exhausting not just creating it, but now seeing people and performing it. That it's exhausting yeah. for you when it's not for everybody else. Well, it's yeah, sort of you know, darkly ironic really for us you know, when we're sort of you know when we're sort of, you know, having been playing and you, sometimes you look at the clock, you know, because there's an elapsed time clock on the stage and it'll say sort of five hours, 40, and you're just like, oh, you know. It's, I mean, it is really hard. I mean, the writing, the production, everything about sleep is hard. You know, the, the performance is like extreme sports. You know, you have to get jet lagged in order to sort of play, you know. So basically I, I, I sort it out so that I, I just had breakfast when I got on the stage so obviously it takes a few days to sort of get into that and every aspect of it's hard you know the technical aspects it's super demanding you know you need a promoter who's like basically very happy to just burn a load of money because it never makes any you know it can't possibly pay for itself so everything is hard about sleep but um but it's worth it you know it is worth it it just feels it's so special when we get to play um, yeah, I mean, it, you just sort of feel it's worth it. Yeah, and watching the documentary, I was fascinated by, and I didn't know this before, and forgive me for not knowing this, but the the way you perform it, and obviously the people come along with sleeping bags, and and yeah. and to come to come to go to sleep, and people, lots yeah. of people in the documentary saying that that's the sleep that they seem to enjoy more than if they're at home because they seem to be detached from their life and their problems if they've got any or from from just life in general i mean yeah. how, what's the experience for you like on stage when you're performing and seeing people around you sleep because normally that's not a sort of normal thing that you would you would see unless it was your partner or someone in your household yeah. um it's amazing it always feels uh, i mean it's very surprising the performance you know i mean when when we first played it we we thought we were just going to go out on stage and play a show but just a long show 
And so we set out to kind of project this music to an audience. But very quickly in that first performance, we just went, hang on, this is wrong. We're doing this wrong, you know, because in a way, the most important thing in that room is those sleeping people, you know, who've come together with strangers to do this very intimate private thing and form this kind of listening community. And really what we're doing as, as, as musicians is we're, we're providing a kind of accompaniment to that or a kind of a landscape for that. And that's really interesting. And you're right, you know, I mean, I get a couple of little breaks, you know, to just grab some coffee and stuff. And um, I quite often have a little wander around in the audience. And it, it is amazing, you know, just seeing all these people that are just, you know, they're, they're strangers. But they're sort of all going on this journey together. And it, it's, it's really lovely. Yeah. And I guess for you as a performer, it must be exciting to play in all these amazing places, you know, Sydney Opera House and, and all the other mm. places. But then to to have this other element to it must make it even more special for you, given that, you know, as I say, as a performer, you'd be like, wow, I get to play the Sydney Opera House. But then there's all this other stuff that comes with it. It must give it such a unique uh, energy. Yeah. I mean, Sydney is, I mean, it's an iconic building, right? I mean, it's one of those venues. It's, you know, you see Albert Hall, it's Sydney Opera House, it's the Hollywood Bowl. I mean, these are iconic um uh places for music to happen and you know for us to get a chance to play at sydney was yeah i mean it was amazing um we had a really special night actually because it was we played in the foyer and, and then piped the music all around the building and um you've got this glass walls on the front and you look out over the bay and there was a huge storm it's really mad storm rain lashing the building and just like masses of you know really big swell in the bay and it's just it was incredible really spectacular strangely that's that's one thing that helps me go to sleep is uh is rain sounds i don't know what it is right, rain exactly, sounds, yeah, yeah. but it's uh it's a strange thing but it helps me go to sleep so <laughs> i would have had a really good night's sleep with you yeah. and the, the the music as well the mm. rain as well should i say um but then obviously the documentary i mean it's 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 a fantastic uh kind of uh you know inward thing to to see you performing to see how you feel about everything and how people are feeling about it i mean mm. what's been your what's been people's reactions to to the documentary and to, to to see you know people like myself who didn't know that people were were doing these things to kind of open yeah. our eyes and think wow this is such a great kind of a way to to un, un, detach ourselves from from our on our troubles and all things that are kind of going on in the world particularly now yeah yeah, I mean, it's a strange time, isn't it? It's a very challenging time. Uh, I mean, I think, uh, you know, creativity can provide a kind of a, a kind of a space to, in a way, recuperate or sort of, you know, take a little break from our day to day. And sleep is that kind of a piece, you know, it's a, it's a, a place to rest, um, a musical place to rest, a place to just kind of pause. And, um, you know, in spite of the fact that we've had this this weird kind of global pause, I think, you know, we still we're still quite frazzled one way and another. You know, there's a lot of anxiety, and yeah, I mean, that's one of the things music can do. You know, that's, I mean, for me, like personally, um, you know, that's one of the things I, I take from music. You know, just this this kind of time out, this ability to just take a moment with a piece of music and just makes your day a bit better you know so um that's yeah that's that's one of the things that sleep's all about yeah I, i'd be remiss as a, as a film website not to ask you about some of your amazing scores and your work in in the film world i mean have you have you enjoyed the kind of unique challenges that that presents of of scoring films different kind of films different stories that, that helped you kind of keep your give you kind of different creative juices if you like sure i mean i i love doing um yeah i love doing movies you know i love the um collaboration aspect of it the fact that you're going out on a sort of yeah it's like a sort of shared voyage with somebody um and trying to solve all those puzzles that um is kind of the heart of movie making that sort of team puzzle solving and trying to find spaces within that you know that sort of bigger object where music can bring something special um and yeah, I really enjoy that because it's it's a great contrast to you know my normal work, which is just me sitting in a room on my own, you know. <laughs> um, so it's like yeah, I, I I really enjoy both actually. That's good. Well, my first my first um, 
taste of you and i'd listened to bits of you before but obviously arrival has been a big for film fans mm. is obviously a big obviously the piece that's in arrival yeah. with johan johansson's uh, mm. score um mm. did you get a sense of 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 that because it's such a such a it comes at such a moment in the movie that kind of mm -hmm. your music matches the kind of the images and everything that's going on did you get a sense then that people had had kind of taken to the that piece of music and also it's now become i think on spotify one of the most kind of streamed pieces of music ever in the history <laughs> yeah well yeah i mean it's it's funny isn't it you, you you never really know um i mean once you know once a a piece of music sort of leaves your studio then it kind of takes on a life of its own in a way and people connect to it in all kinds of surprising ways um i mean with that piece i, I you know i i felt like that that use and arrival really made sense because uh, on the nature of daylight comes from a record of mine the blue notebooks and that's that's a kind of protest record really it's an anti-violence record it, it it comes out of the lead up to the iraq war and um, Arrival is a, an anti-violence film, really. It's about you know, language rather than bombs. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I felt it really made sense, you know, uh, to, for it to sort of live in that, in that uh, film. And of course, Johan's score is great. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it's been wonderful how, how people have connected to it. Has this uh, obviously you talk about there about about the blue notebooks and you know mm. anti protest and about the Iraq war and stuff like that in a, in a strange way does does what's happened in 2020 in, inspire you given what's going on is it strange as it may seem given what's going on in the world not just with with the coronavirus but obviously the the black lives matter movement and everything else that's 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 going on mm -hmm. in the world at the moment does that in a strange way inspire you to want to to make more music and to make it relevant to to people's experiences now yeah well i mean that's that's very much behind the project I've just released, uh, Voices. You know, Voices is um, is in a way a kind of a response to the politics of the last few years, um, which has become increasingly depressing, really. Um, <laughs> and um, you know, I, I think it's easy to get a bit hopeless, really, when we're looking around at you know, you've mentioned um, you know the situation in the states, and I mean, it's just oh, so depressing um so i you know i wanted to make a piece which responded to that um and uh, voices is based around the universal declaration of human rights for that reason you know because i i felt like um you know if we look carefully and think carefully we actually have got the answers to all these problems we've made um it's just that we've kind of forgotten <laughs> somehow <laughs> and uh, so yeah voices shines a light on the declaration and um yeah, it's sort of, it's basically a proposition, a hopeful proposition for the future. Yeah, and just, a, just as a final question then before, before I let you go, obviously sleep, the performance is so extraordinary and and so um, unique to to the way that you do it and the way that people kind of um, interact with it. Are you, are you, are you, are you hopeful of, of, of doing it again soon? Have they given you any indication when it might be safe for you to, to do so again? Because obviously given the nature of it, it's obviously a little mm. bit more complicated now. Yeah, I mean, in a way, it's it's sort of the perfect socially distanced gig because everyone's just in their beds and you know you put the beds far apart and that's it. But the problem is, it's just the infrastructure to make a sleep show happen. I mean, you need a massive space and a huge amount of technical staff, and it's just incredibly expensive. And you know, all the venues and promoters, I mean, they're you know, they're on their knees. You know, they're all hanging by a thread and. I mean, it's really tough times for them. So I think it's going to be a while. Um, yeah, certainly there won't be anything this year. And, you know, we'll, we'll see about next year. Well, fingers, uh, fingers crossed you get yeah. to do it again. Because I think people might think people need something like this right now. Let's be. Yeah, let's be I agree. Nice. I mean, it, any kind of music making, you know, even the small kinds of performances that have happened recently. I mean, they've been amazing just to see, you know, sort of live music. It's been great. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Max, thank you so, so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. All right. Thanks thank a lot. Thank you so much. Cheers. Bye bye. bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.